Hey, welcome back. So in the last video, we were looking at the Laplace transform. We're looking at how to go from the T domain to the S domain. We're taking the Laplace of it. And now we're going to go look into the inverse Laplace transform in which we basically do the opposite. We go from the S domain to the T domain. So we can have a, a, a something written and already in the S domain, and we have to follow some steps to find whatever that function will be in respects to T. So the example that we have here, we have five over S minus one over S plus five plus two over S squared. So if you already saw the first video regarding Laplace transform, um, then this should be pretty, uh, pretty easy to follow. If you have not, then go back and watch it. Link will be here. Uh, shown in the video and that you can see where everything is coming from where this table it, it, we're getting it from and so on so uh, first things first let's take the Laplace inverse of all of this you can see that in contrast with the Laplace which is just the L for everything we're taking the Laplace inverse you can see we're taking Laplace to the negative one that that's what it means Laplace inverse so to take the Laplace inverse uh, the linear theorem or the linear property still applies. So it is taking the Laplace inverse of the whole term. It's the same thing as taking the Laplace inverse of each individual uh, function. So, and just like we, we're taking the Laplace, we can factor out the coefficients. So you can see for the first one, we can have five times the Laplace inverse of one over S minus the Laplace inverse of one over s minus negative 5. You can see we had it s plus 5 before, but because you can see in the table, we only have s minus a, uh, then we have to basically, we know that that number then was a negative. And then for the last the, the last term, we have plus 2 Laplace inverse of 1 over s squared. So uh, I'll think we, what we're going to do right now is look for the Laplace inverse or like the function. So we basically just read the table backwards. So for one over S, you can see if we read to the left, the Laplace inverse of one over S is simply one. For one over S plus five or one over S minus negative five, whichever way you want to read it, the Laplace inverse will be an exponential. In this case, A will be negative five. And then for the last one of one over S squared, uh, the Laplace inverse, well, that's uh, basically the one for t uh, to the n. So in this case, we have um, n to be 1. So that, that way we have um, just t. So doing that, uh, basically, we write the Laplace inverse, and then we do redistribute the coefficients. And what we're left with is that the Laplace inverse of 5 over s minus 1 over s plus 5 plus 2 over s squared, it's simply 5 minus e to the negative of i t plus 2t. And it's as simple as that. So hopefully this was, uh, I hope that this problem was useful. Let's, let's look at another one. Uh, in this case, we have 3 over s squared plus 4 minus 2 over s squared plus 4 plus 2s over s squared plus 4 minus 2s squared minus 4. So you can see we have a lot of similar terms, but uh, some of them are, are distinct. Some of them are pretty similar. So let's see what we can do here. So once again, you can see the first two terms, the 3 and the 2 over s squared plus 4, because they have the same denominator, we can basically combine them. And 3 minus 2 basically gives us 1. The second term, also has the same denominator, we can combine them. Uh, we could, but because we want to take the Laplace inverse of this, um, we would essentially need to like then separate them again to take the Laplace inverse of each one of those. So uh, it's not really convenient to combine those, but in this case, the first two, we can. And then the last one is that the, basically the, the denominator, it is different, so we cannot combine it. So here we're taking the Laplace inverse of one over s squared plus four plus two s over s squared plus four minus two over s squared minus four. So that's the same thing as taking the individual Laplace of each. You can see we can factor out 
the coefficients uh, or at least well, we can simplify. You can see for all of them, uh, we have four, it's simply two square. So this can make it easier to identify which of this um, Laplace inverses we're gonna be using. And here is where we factor out the coefficients and it looks something easier to find on the table. So for the first one, we have one or s squared plus two squared. And that looks like this one of sine omega t over omega. And you can see that it's pretty similar to the sine, but this one we are divided by omega and that's why we have a one on top. So this is also given to you in, in most tables. So it looks like that one, where omega in this case seems to be two. And then we have plus uh, two times the Laplace inverse of s or s squared plus two squared. Well, that looks like the one for cosine. Once again, where omega is two. And the last one, it looks pretty similar. Uh, I have one over something. So that looks like um, the hyperbolic sine. So you can see we have a. So uh, in this case, a it's two. We have we actually factor out the two, but if we bring it back in, it you can see it will basically work out itself. So, um, this is what the Laplace inverse for each one will be. So you can see the first one will be sine of two t over two, because that's of the Laplace inverse that we got, plus two times cosine of two t, minus two times sine hyperbolic of two t over two. And once again, if those two over two will cancel out, and our answer will be half sine of two t plus two cosine of two t minus sine hyperbolic of two t. Once again, you can see the process is pretty straightforward. It's not difficult at all, and it's uh, really easy to follow. So hope that you guys are understanding this. And then our last problem here, we have three s minus 42 over s squared plus 36. So we want to take the Laplace of this, Laplace inverse, and you can see that th there isn't really any functions here that looks like this one, not yet, at least. So what we can do is that if they have the same denominator, we can basically split up the top. So we can split it into 3s over s squared plus 36 minus 42 over um, s squared plus 36. And we can take the Laplace inverse of each one of those. As always, we can factor out, oh, we can rewrite the 36 into six square. So, and then we can factor out uh, uh, to make it easier. So you can see for the first one, we can factor out the three. And if I factor out a seven from the sec from the 42, I'm um, have six over S square plus six square, which if you pay close attention, hopefully you already found the pattern on this. The first one will be a cosine where omega is six, and the second one will be a sine, where omega is also six, that's why I factor out seven, so that could be omega over a square plus omega square. And then I just substitute in their Laplace inverses, and this is my final answer. Three cosine of 60 minus seven sine of 60. So, so far, we have not solved any differential equations. All we have done is just find the Laplace inverse or Laplace transform of different expressions. That's all we've done so far in these two videos. But uh, we're gonna apply this knowledge. We're gonna see a couple more videos of uh, more ways in which we can solve some of these things, whether they're not like really manageable. Um, some tricks here and there, some processes that we need to do. And after that, we're gonna basically start solving our differential equations. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one where we're gonna start covering some more topics in regards to the Laplace transform. Until then, good luck.